Well, today we're going to continue our study in the book of Ephesians. But before we do, I would like to invite you to the Story of Grace Conference, which is going to be October the 3rd, 2015 of this year at Oasis Church in Pascagoula, Mississippi. It's a conference that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be speaking on the story of God's grace that that starts before time began and and will will be in operation long after our time on earth is over and we get into uh, the coming ages where we'll become objects of the grace of God. And I'm going to be just sharing with you from God's Word the story and the unfolding of God's grace. Well, we're going to continue in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 through 14. We're looking at the spiritual blessings that are ours in Christ, uh, these blessings that have come by faith in Jesus Christ, which is a part of God's story of grace. The story of grace is God's unfolding uh, plan for us that He has for the human race. Starting with verse 11, we looked at it a little bit yesterday. In Him, in Christ, we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of Him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of of his will. You see, that's what God's doing right now. He's working out everything in conformity to the purpose of his will. And his will is the revelation or the unfolding of grace on the human race. We find in 2 Timothy chapter 1 that, that God gave us grace in Christ before time began. Timothy was the pastor in Ephesus. And so Paul was sharing with him some uh, when he wrote his letter to him about grace and the good news of grace that God had given us in Christ before time began. And God's working out his plan of grace, this story of grace unfolding to the human race. So he's working out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. And his will is to bring grace to us in order that we who were the first to hope in Christ, to hope in Christ. The word hope means to have a life with, with meaning and purpose. It means to have something to live for now, purpose now, and to, to have something to look forward to in the future. And in Christ, we have something to live for now, and we also have something to look forward to in the future. Our lives have purpose now. Our lives have meaning both on this, this earth and for all eternity. We have hope in Christ. The world hope, the world's definition of hope is, is almost the ex expectation of the worst. It, they'll say, well, all we can do is hope which means all we can do is, is wish for the best but really expect the worst. The word hope biblically is this absolute 100% confident guarantee that we have purpose now and we have something to look forward to in the future in Christ. So who, we were the first to hope in Christ, Paul said. It might be for the praise of His glory. And you were also included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. The word of truth the gospel of your salvation. The word gospel means good news. And the good news about salvation is that Christ died for all of our sins. That God's not counting our sins against us. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19 says that all of our sins were counted against Christ. Colossians 2, 13 and 14 says all of our sins have been forgiven. You and I are forgiven people. That's good news. It's good news that we've been made holy before God. It's good news that we're without stain or wrinkle, that we stand before God flawless and faultless before Him for all time because the blood of Christ has cleansed us from all sin. That's good news that God wants us to, to know. It's His will that we know the good news of what God did for us through Christ on the cross. It says, having believed this good news, having put your faith and having trusted in the good news of the cross, it says, you were marked in Christ with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. See, see Christ through the, Spirit of, through the Holy Spirit has come to live in us. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 4 that God redeemed us from the law. And having redeemed us from the law, He sent the Spirit of His Son, Jesus Christ, to live in us. The Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. See, the Spirit coming to live in us is a guarantee that you and I are going to spend eternity with God and, and in the coming ages to experience everything that He has for us, this coming inheritance, the Bible calls it. It says the promised Holy Spirit who lives in us is, is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. See, you and I have an inheritance that's coming. An inheritance is it's something that awaits someone who has a wealthy parent. And if their parents are wealthy, they have this inheritance that's waiting on, on them. Well, you and I have the, the inheritance of, of the creator of the universe. The God who created everything has given us an inheritance. We have a spiritual inheritance in Christ that's ours now. The riches of grace where we're forgiven and we're holy and we're without stain or wrinkle before Him. 
We stand before Him faultless and flawless. That's our spiritual inheritance now. But we also have a future inheritance where the Bible talks about in the coming ages, the new heaven, the new earth, where there's no more tear, and there's no more mourning, there's no more crying, there's no more pain, there's no more heartache. There's only complete joy where you and I will experience God every day for the rest of our lives on the new earth, where everyone is loved and everything is right. See, we have a great inheritance coming. We have something to look forward to in the future. And the Holy Spirit living inside of us, enabling us to call God Abba Father, guarantees this inheritance that's coming. It says, until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of His glorious grace. You know that you're God's possession, that He values you. We see people who have valued possessions. Some people, it's, it's an antique piece of furniture. Some people, it, it, it's a car. And things that we value, we take care of. God values you. He proved how much He loves you at the cross. He proved that you meant something to Him at the cross. If you've ever felt like you weren't valuable to God, if you've ever felt like you didn't matter to God, I want you to know the good news of, of, of the cross, the good news of your salvation, is that you're loved by God. You matter to God. No matter what you've done in the past, no matter what you've done or sins you've committed, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all sinned. But God demonstrated how, and demonstrated how much He loved us when He sent Christ to die for us on the cross. We're valuable to God. We're matter, we matter to God. You matter to God. You're His possession. He loves you. It says, we are God's possession to the praise of His, glory, of His glory. Paul used this phrase, to the praise of His glory, three times in the Bible. First, or in Ephesians chapter 1. The first where he said, to the praise of His glorious grace. Or to, to the praise of God the Father. Actually, he's used it four times. To the praise of His glory. To the praise of His glory. God is saying, in view of grace, in view of the spiritual blessings that have come to us through Christ, these blessings that God has taken out of heaven and brought to earth for you and me, when we see these blessings and we see God's grace, all we can say is, God, you're an incredible God. You're a marvelous God. You're a wonderful God. You're a loving God who values us, who, who we're important to you, God. And we thank you and we praise you. We speak highly of you because of who you are and what you've done. I hope you have a great day.